Hello, we are at the sacral chakra. And so I just want to share with you this awesome book that I got. It's called Magic Witchcraft and Ghosts in the Greek and Roman Worlds. Oh, Let me interesting. tell you, for a devotee of Circe, it is <laughs> it is about the most delicious thing I've read in a long time. Oh, interesting. And it had I would consider this like some advanced witchcraft here. Like this is like mm. uh this is an anthropology book. It's it's kind of like looking um not anthropology. I guess what is it when you take you get it's a it's a scholarly book that gathers all the different sources together is there a name oh. for the book that looks at like all the sort like gathers like a bunch of different sources to a specific end I don't I mean in research that's like a meta-analysis but that's like statistically well so, so it's something like yeah that. something mm. like that yes but it's so, like a literature review Yes, and like I'm telling you, like the okay, so let me just read down this front little thing. Okay, so the first ones, so it's Greek sorcerers, alien sorcerers, the rivals of Jesus, hmm. the Dia and Circe, nice witches in Greek literature, witches in Latin literature, ghosts, necromancy, curses. Hmm. Is erotic, it like erotic magic, voodoo oh. dolls, and what? Is it just like lore, or is there actual like? It's not lore at all. It's actual writings. Oh, like so it takes. That's what I mean. Like it like compiles. Like so, for example, let's just like let's just. I'm just gonna pick in and go right here. Okay, so mm -hmm. of course I get to like the the sources, the notes. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay, so I was gonna pick a one. Okay, um, still in the notes. Like, okay, pick one from the beginning, Rachel. Okay, <laughs> here we go. So I just opened it to Apollonius orders the stoning of a plague demon at Ephesus. Mm. And it's after it tells the time after 217 AD, and it's like from the life of Apollonius. Like, so, like, there's mm -hmm. different books. Some of them are from the Odyssey. Some is from, like, Pliny's Natural History. Like, Hadrian of Tyre. Like, literally, it's amazing. It's so good. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And I want, cra I got another one. I got a, um, I just, I was, I, like, went crazy with books like this. I got, like, three <laughs> of them. Probably shouldn't have. No. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I start buying books mm -hmm. that I'm in trouble. Mm. like go down and I've got like a bunch coming now no. <laughs> let me share my screen mm. sacral chakra herbs I love these pictures <laughs> yeah they're good okay. okay so this Svadisthana that's the name for it and it means the seat of life so um, it's, there's two ways to look at it. So one's own abode and to taste sweet pleasure. So you can either look from like the SVA is points to one's own abode, but the SVAD, oh, there it is, one's own, but the SVAD beginning is to taste sweet or to taste with pleasure, to enjoy, to take delight. So Svadasthana. And then where is it located? So it is located, um, I, I've heard it described like one to two inches below your belly button in that like seat, like that place above that bowl and about two inches below your belly button. So that like if you're a um, if you were born with a womb space, that's where it would be in the womb space area. <clears throat> so then the symbols are two interlocking six petal lotuses with a crescent moon inside. And of course, there's like these two kind of symbols that people like you, I think you can get as crazy with the symbols. It just gets more and more layered. And there's like one huge mega symbol probably that has all these images in it. And then there's 
the simplified symbols of it is what I'm kind of thinking it is because mm -hmm. the um, more expansive symbol has a Makara in it. And we're going to look at what a Makara is. And the Makara mm -hmm. has a twisting tail. And also it has Vishnu and Shakti Rakini. So that's a more sim like a simplified. And this mm -hmm. is even a more simplified because this is the more like expansive drawing of it. And this is from a book that I have from the Wheel of Life from um, Anodia Judith. I think that is her last name because yeah, like hold on. No, my God. Yeah, it is. Anodia Judith. That's her last name. So um, anyway, so you can see that it has, a, there's a lot going on in there. So there's the god Vishnu there. And then also um, the goddess Shakti Rakini is uh, an incarnation of the goddess Shakti. And they, with all these arms, with kind of weaponry in these arms as well, different things in these arms. So... So the correspondences, of, of course, it corresponds with water. And, okay, and so I also wanted to start by saying that I heard a lot of places talk about this being a, um, a, a um, an energy center or a chakra of polarity. So they mm -hmm. talked about it like being like, like, like dark and white, like mixing like two polarities together like they a lot of kind of things talk about that and um anyways so damiana is kind of an interesting herb because it kind of i feel that polarity in that herb anyway we'll talk more about that mm. so the verb is i feel the outer state is liquid the glands are the ovaries and the testicles of course because we're dealing in that womb space area <clears throat> and what are testicles but just ovaries that have migrated <laughs> downwards to the outside and then you've taken the vulva and formed around it and sewed it up the center very nicely into a scrotum yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry very true <laughs> very true exactly <laughs> um body parts are of course the womb the genitals kidney bladder circulate and then the circulatory system of course because liquid liquid and then when when this um when this chakra is out of kilter the body problems that we can encounter are impotence frigidity uterine or bladder or kidney trouble or even like a stiff lower back sometimes people suffer with and the color is orange, but I picked this lovely little peachy color that I like so mm -hmm. much. Um, and then the sound is a bomb, or in the alternative, the ooh, like dude. Mm. In tarot, it's represented by cups. The celestial body is the moon, obviously that crescent moon. And I have to tell you that like low hanging crescent moon is huge. It's in the, it's, um, it's all over the place. It's in the, um, Virgin de Guadalupe in the, um, she's, she, the, like the boy is standing holding, I don't know if that's Juan Diego in that picture, but holding up the moon that she rests her feet on the moon, the crescent moon it's in the, um, tarot, the high priestess rests on the moon her feet too and then also that with the um, sacral chakra so that um that moon center so i draw your attention to those three that grouping because that's an interesting little crescent moon on the bottom there yeah and very similar like in the same shape too yes so the metal is tin the foods are liquids or orange foods or pleasure foods. And we'll talk about some of those pleasure foods when we get later on in my discussion. The minerals are carnelian, moonstone, and coral. 
The animals are the makara, and I'll show you a picture of the makara, the fish or sea creatures. And the yoga path is a tantric path. And it is that idea of these like these like two like like movements taking those two um polarities and kind of moving them. That's like the like kundalini practice and tantric practice as well. So, oh, there's a Makara right there. So the Makara can either have like that, that, um, that mouth, like a, um, like a crocodilio, <laughs> or it can have like the, a trunk mm -hmm. like that. So it's talked about in both ways. The Makara, it's like a mythical, what do they call cryptozoology? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Oh, and this is, um, what's it called? This, that is, um, Rakini. So that is Shakti at the Svarasvana level is Rakini. And there she is right there. It's also associated, associated with Diana, Jemaya, Tiamat, Mari, and Conventina. And like I said, I only include goddesses in there, so... People can fight me on it the force is the attraction of opposites like we've been talking about the numbers are three or multiples of three especially six because there are six petals to the lotus flower the sense is taste it's all about pleasure here the characteristic of self is creativity that that elicits and, and I would say creativity, like in more than just creativity, like you're making a pretty picture or painting something. I mean, in all forms of creativity, like abundance and fertility and like spring creativity, like create creation. That's why like the womb space, that's like, even though, even though you may not have a womb space, I get it. <laughs> okay, so the, then the women's psychic power, that's what Diane Stein calls it. So I'll just stick with her because... I like that. <laughs> the women's psychic power that's associated with the, um, with the sacral chakra is astral projection. She said that's where you connect your silver cord. Like when you astral project, like your, you connect your, um, your, what's it called? Your physical yeah. body with your astral mm -hmm. body with this like silver cord that is um, connecting to your sacral chakra. So the nutshell of Svarasthana is emotions. It's all about emotions and pleasure. Those are like the two prongs of this. And like I said, the other thing you remember is it's like duality, which is an interesting, the polarity or the mixing of polarities or creation from polarity balance or something like that. So um, Damiana. So that's my first one. And there's two Latin names. It's either considered Ternera diffusa or Ternera aphrodisiaca. Nice. So there it is. And there's my, um, that's what my, um, what AI thinks it looks like. Hmm. I don't know if it looks like that, but that's what AI. <laughs> Some thought there. So the other names <clears throat> is Lovely, Herba de la Pastora. Mexican Damiana, Old Woman's Broom, and Mexican Holly. The correspondences are water, of course, and, and fire. So this is where I'm talking about like these dual correspondences. So like, I, for, and I was skeptical. So at first when I wrote this, I did not include the ones that were in the parentheses. Okay, because I, I thought like, I, I have to pick a, um, I'm going to pick, like, they seemed so, like, disparate, like, they were polar, and, like, water and fire, like, seemed, like, pretty, like, wow, like, how could you get more opposite, you know, and so, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then, but then I started, like, going through them, and then something happened where, like, I had an experience with the actual herb when I was tincturing it off, and I'll show it to you that completely changed my feelings about it. So I include this, so we'll go through it and then I'll tell at the end, I'll tell you what it is. 
So the planet, either it's looked at as Venus and Pluto or Jupiter and Mars. The chakra is sacral. And the deities are the love goddess. And I the X in Nahuatl, which is the Aztec language, is a sh. So it's show chiquetzel. Show chiquetzel. Like that. There we go. Artemis, Diana, and Oshun. And of course, all those are, um, yeah. Because these are, this is a new world. So I, for some reason, I've been picking these. And new world, that's so shitty. That's the shittiest thing I've said this whole time. New world <laughs> is bogus. And I want to like say big fuck you to that. It's not new. It's been here just as long as the old country, whatever. But it's like, um, and, and it has just as amazing and long of a history and a rich tradition. So I think it does it injustice to say new world. I think that's kind of like a shitty thing to say about this beautiful place where we reside. Anyway, so blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so um, all those, the, the like Artemis, Diana, and Oshun, those came later. Because these herbs didn't get, like, even the ones that I was talking about before, like the pink peppercorn, they didn't get to Spain until later. And same with the next one I'm going to do. It's not, they came to Spain after the fact. So when you're associating these other goddesses, these are late, later associations than um, Xochiquetzal, right? So that's a way earlier correspondence. So then the tarot is the Empress or the Page of Cups. Astrological sign is either Cancer or Scorpio, which are both watery. The crystal is quartz. And so you're supposed to store um, Damiana with quartz. And you can anoint it, um, anoint the quartz with oil of Dami Damiana so they go both ways they have an affinity for each other so and I don't even know let me see because let's see. oh and the sabbat ritual is Samhain that it's associated for okay so let's go back so now I'm going to show you this. so and I've got I've got something for when you do yours too because I made something special for that too so it's, uh, remind me let's see okay um where is it where is it? That's raspberry. The Damiana. Okay. So I made this um yummy Damiana tincture, right? And so I like to do one. I like to try one that we're doing at least, if I have the herb. And um, when and I so I was like, this is such a green, beautiful burden. Like I feel the water. I feel like it's. You know, and then, then I, I filled it too high though, as I normally do, because I'm always so excited. I want tons of herbs. Let's get it rich and thick. And then I like, look at it. And I'm like, this is the next day is like, it fluffs up. Right. And then I'm like, oh, I gotta like, give some of you to like the, you know, the earth. I've got to like, you know, offer some of you beautiful thing already to the earth. And so I pulled out, I opened it up and I went to scoop out some of the Damiana and it has the spiciest smell like a like a mm. like men's spicy like it's got like a I was like oh my gosh this is so Mars so fire I'm like that's mm. so weird you are like yeah. so both exactly it's yeah so it definitely smells like spicy I like it yeah exactly it's like has like I felt like I felt the bothness of it the water mm. and the fire and like like the the polarity and why it is such a um like an herb that goes so perfectly with the sacral chakra anyway mm. ah! okay so the sto lower stories and cultural import so the mayans and the incas are um is it is it Mayan or Maya? It's Mayan. It's Mayan. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I was just looking at that. So mm -hmm. they the um they have ancient rituals that were related to love and fertility that were associated with Damiana. And in Mexico, they have this Damiana liqueur that is mm -hmm. in the shape of a pregnant woman. 
And so interesting, but folklore in folklore, it was used by brujas and curanderas for love and sex magic. And then there's this Damiana liqueur, which is this sweet herbal liqueur, and it's made from Damiana, and it's produced in Mexico. And it's said to represent the Greek goddess of fertility. So Damiana liqueur is indeed celebrated for its supposed aphrodisiac properties. And it's like they often are supposed to use, it's like, it's a thing to use this in if you want to get romantic. Hmm. So then the magical properties, of course, Damiana is associated with love and sex. Aphrodisiac, it's called aphrodisiac, aphrodisiac, yeah, what, ternera is, wait, yeah. <laughs> um, and it's a sex herb, it's used with sex magic, it's associated with a great rite, and, of, and then you can make your own aphrodisiac liqueur with it. So you can steep it with vanilla and galangal. And, and galangal actually is like chewing John. So like mm. one type of galangal is. Um, cinnamon and whole allspice berries, which are pimentos and honey. And you can put those in rum for two weeks. Mm. Yeah. And then you can make, you can have your own little aphrodisiac liquor. Okay, so then also it's known for its consciousness altering, which is kind of a little, I wasn't quite um, sold on, I wasn't, I didn't really know about this, but it's considered mm -hmm. a magical herb and a ritual herb, and you can drink it in an infusion or smoke it in ritual to increase your magic, mm -hmm. and it's supposed to increase your magical energy in a ritual, and it'll also help you let, fall in love with magic again. So if you felt like you're not, um, I don't know, sometimes we go through ups and downs with magic. And if you really want to, like, if you're wanting to reconnect with your magical parts, like this looks like a really fun one to put together here. Four parts lemongrass, one part Damiana, a half a part honeysuckle, a fourth of a part blue lotus, a fourth of a part lemon, two parts passion flower, a half a part lavender, a quarter part jasmine, and a quarter of a part mugwort. Do you put that in an infusion or like incense? Yeah, in an infusion. Okay. And then, so meditation, it's also used in meditation. You can switch off the, like all your managers and your firefighters in your head, all the chatter that's going on in your head. Um, you can, it's a, an herb that can help you to quiet those voices a little bit for the time being. And then also use it for lucid dreaming. So to combine with passion flower and lavender in an infusion for lucid dreams. Mm -hmm. It's also used for divination. <laughs> That's <laughs> <a> divination. <laughs> mm -hmm. So then the medical properties are that it's a nerve tonic, an antidepressant, a urinary, I think it's antiseptic, is that? Yeah, antiseptic. A laxative, a mild purgative or purgative, a diuretic, a stimulant, and an antispasmodic. So it's a nervine, and it's supposed to strengthen your nervous system, it relaxes tense nerves, and all those good things. So antidepressant, anti-anxiety, it's supposed to help with mood swings, and it's supposed to be a brain tonic to increase your endurance. So mm -hmm. I think that also, like, it kind of bled over a lot of the um, magical properties kind of bled over as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So tension headaches, you can inhale the steam, like steep it and inhale the steam from the water. And asthma attacks. So, oh, somebody, <laughs> somebody is, has a love. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, okay <laughs> asthma attacks it's good for asthma attacks as well urethritis and cystitis constipation because it is a, a mild laxative 
And okay, so it's all over the place. It's talked about being an aphrodisiac, but there's really no scientific evidence for that thus far. But I don't think that there's really much like actual evidence for aphrodisiacs in general. I think they think it's a placebo effect. Yeah, like the only thing that really works is well, I heard that there's like a women's Viagra, isn't there? Like, or I don't. Viagra isn't, you're not, if you're a woman, you're not supposed to take Viagra, but there's supposed to be something mm-hmm. else you can take, I thought, that's like. Like natural, like an herb? No. no. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sure, like, pharmaceutical <laughs> there is, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, placebo and, effect is still in effect. Or, like, also anything that'll probably increase circulation. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Because I think a lot of times that's, you need to get the blood circulating where mm-hmm. it will. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so, it, but th- people who say that it has an aphrodisiac effect say that it has a testosterone-like action, that it helps mm. even infertility and erectile dysfunction, all the things, and will help both women and men, strengthens women's sexual, whole sexual system. And it's also considered to be a woman's herb, so it's supposed to regulate painful periods. Mm. Although I don't have to worry about any of that anymore. (laughs) God. So it's Oh, look. Okay, go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Oh, yeah. No, I was just going to say I have, like, a pre-mixed, like, infusion. Um, But I just, I feel like for mine, it's so bad. Like, everything takes it down, like, half a notch. (laughs) And then it still is, like, terrible. Yeah, if you're at a if you're at a nine and it takes it down to like a nine point five or or like yeah. a nine or eight point five. <laughs> so this is supposed to increase general blood flow. So I guess if it does mm-hmm. that, yeah, maybe that is what they're talking about. Yeah. Assist, it's supposedly it's supposed to assist in weight loss, breast cancer treatment. Mm-hmm. And in the Caribbean or Caribbean, the vapors inhaled to relieve headaches and to control bedwetting and little things. Mm. Okay, so that's that. My next one is vanilla. Nice. Vanilla. Vanilla planifolia. There it is. Mm. And the other names are Benilde. And Tlil Show Cheetle. Okay, because remember the X is a sh Tlil Show Cheetle. And Zizbek. The plant information. So it's part of the O Orchid family. And it originated in Mexico. So late to the game, vanilla. Uh-oh, mm-hmm. we got 10 minutes. So um yeah. So we are late to this game. Um, I can't, it blows my mind that like we didn't have vanilla until the late date of the conquistadores, you know, mm-hmm. like that, like Europe didn't have vanilla. It's like, you think that Europe, we have all this like history and this like stories about like millennia of history of Europe and foods of Europe and everything. And to think that they were making foods and treats and tasty things without like this beautiful orchid is hilarious. And Mm. the funny story about vanilla that I'm going to tell is so rad. I can't even (laughs) believe it. Okay. So the sap though may cause a rash Okay, and it is a flavoring, obviously, and a perfume scent. And this flower blooms one time for one day during the day, okay, when it's fully grown, one time. If it's not pollinated by a hummingbird or a human, it will fall off and die. Mm. So if it is pollinated, if and I spelled that wrong, it becomes the fruit, the bean, and it takes eight to nine months to ripen like significant yeah no wonder it's expensive Mm. element is water or air planet is venus chakra is sacral the deities is the love god shochi quetzal and shanath 
And later, of course, Hecate, Venus, and Aphrodite. The astrological sign is Taurus. The day of the week is Friday. The tarot card is the Empress, which is interesting. The Empress has showed up quite a bit in these mm -hmm. sacral chakra cards. Mm -hmm. And then, so the lore, the cultural import, Mayans and the Incas. So again, we're here. We're here in the Americas. So Mayan cultures called vanilla zizbek. And they developed like the first way to cure the beans. And then they were, they were mixed with Copal or Copali and they were burned mm -hmm. in the, they were um, temple incense. So that mm -hmm. it was used as temple incense with Copal. Oh, that smells delicious. I know you think. <laughs> okay. So then before the Aztecs were the Tot Tot Totonics, Totonics, mm -hmm. maybe Totonic. Totonac culture of Mesoamerica. So they're the first to domesticate the vanilla orchid. And they have this mythology. So the vanilla, vanilla was born of the blood of the princess Shanath. Her name means hidden flower. And so in, and I don't even, I'm not even gonna say it's mm -hmm. Zako Pancitsa in and which is called the morning star or black flower in Aztec. So this story translated. So Shanath was a beautiful princess and she was forbidden by her father to marry a mortal man that she loved. This is a theme as well that I find often. So in their despair, the lovers fled into the forest only to be captured and beheaded. And so then their hearts were still pulsating and their hearts were extracted and presented as offerings to the goddess and their bodies were cast into the ravine and everywhere that the blood touched the ground this tropical orchid grew the vanilla mm -hmm. so literally like this i i found this theme recently and i know it has no not the same but the kind of the same theme of forbidden love and um, a girl being absconded away by a forbidden love and then being found and then both being killed in some horrific way and either from the blood or from the plant became it became the plant like that's mm -hmm. that's actually that's like a thematic thing yeah I've there's seen. a lot I agree I also find there's a lot of just like where the blood hits the ground like plants grow in like the the lores of a lot of plants which is interesting mm -hmm. so teutonic aztecs again so so then aztecs conquered the totonax or totonax in the 15th century and they they were introduced when they did they were introduced to vanilla by them and they loved it so much that they demanded that vanilla beans became a tribute. And mm -hmm. the Aztecs were the ones that combined the vanilla with the cacao to make this beautiful aromatic drink called chocolate, chocolate. Mm -hmm. And it's like a precursor to the modern hot chocolate. So it was reserved for the nobility and the warriors. And it was like believed to con like to give strength and vitality. Um, Montezuma the second, the Aztec emperor said to said to have consumed it in large quantities before visiting concubines. And that's like why one of the reasons why vanilla is considered an aphrodisiac. Hmm. So this is so great. So Montezuma was seen drinking this chocolate with the Tlil Xochitl, which is the vanilla. Um, mm -hmm. And he, they were, he was seen drinking this drink by Bernal Diaz. And Diaz was then served this chocolate mixture in golden goblets with golden spoons. And he brought chocolate and vanilla back to Spain. Okay. Mm -hmm mind-blowing <laughs> mind-blowing it's like our main flavor in the world for sweet mm -hmm. things is chocolate and, and um tlil tlil <laughs> <laughs> that is so rad mm -hmm. i'm so excited like yes okay 
Um, so there were, th and when, when he brought, when Diaz brought, um, this Tlil show, Tlil show Chilo, um, back to Spain, there were three of the farms that were processing the vanilla and, um, he left one, one of the, in the groups of these Totonac or Totonac Totonaco Indians paired with Cortez and they because they were paired with this um with the the a colonial entity that holding was left like literally untouched for a long time it was like the like a private the last like these this private holdings of these vanilla um this vanilla processing and it was left untouched by the outside for a long time. So it was like something quite amazing. And it was kind of because they were attached to Cortez. But anyway. Mm. So also in England, then guess what happens? Queen Elizabeth the first gets this and tastes it and loves it so much that she has it prescribed by a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> she like everybody she has it with everything she flavors everything with vanilla of course because why wouldn't you mm -hmm. because it's vanilla it's like i <laughs> <laughs> so it's property is love and sex again we're back to love and sex so it comes vanilla comes also you can get vanilla powder in this white powder and one of the things that it's suggested is that you bathe in patchouli soap and then dust yourself with this powder for to attract love. Mm. And then you can mix it in a love incense and burn it daily so your mate will think of you. And we have like one minute left. So let's stop now and then we will come back. Okay. Okay. I will look for the... I'll post it, yeah. Okay. Hmm? Hmm. 